microplastics are becoming recognized as a much bigger health hazard than previously thought. There's evidence that micro and nanoplastics can disrupt your hormones, affect fertility, and they're even implicated in atherosclerosis. The problem is that microplastics can be found almost everywhere, in your food, water, personal care products, and environment. There are ways to excrete them from your body, such as via sweating, but the most important thing to do is to reduce your exposure to these microplastics. So in this video, I'm going to outline you the major food sources of microplastics, so you can make healthier decisions with your meals. Let's start with protein, because it's a surprising source of microplastics. A shocking report in early 2024 found that Americans are consuming up to 3.8 million microplastic particles a year from protein alone. They looked at 16 commonly consumed protein sources in the US and found that they all contained some amounts of microplastics. Here's an overview of their findings. The more processed the food was, the higher the amount of microplastics. For example, breaded shrimp contain 1.3 plus and minus 1.9 microplastics per gram. Other foods with the most microplastics were chicken nuggets, fish sticks, and plant-based nuggets. Tofu, which is processed, doesn't have that much microplastics though. However, even minimally processed and unprocessed whole foods like shrimp, Alaskan pollock, and steak were seen to contain microplastics. The reason has to probably do with the packaging. If you package the food in plastic, then the moisture and water in the protein is going to leach some of the microplastics into the food. This is something you can't avoid entirely because most food will be packaged in some sort of a package that contains plastics and protein is also something that you need for survival. If you're at a supermarket, then get the meat and fish that's either frozen or from the cold. If the meat or fish is unpackaged, then that's the best option. If it's packaged, then getting it from the freezer reduces the likelihood the microplastics have leached into the food because heat and moisture make them leach out more. When it comes to canned proteins like canned sardines or canned beans, then it's also an unfortunate situation. Tin and aluminum cans actually are coated with plastics from the inside to prevent them from leaking aluminum into the food. So if the food has been sitting in the can for months, then it's been leaching a lot of microplastics into the food. A 2011 randomized crossover trial found that people consuming one serving of canned soup over the course of five days saw a 1200% increase in their urinary levels of BPA. So it's better to minimize your use of canned foods and use glass jars or other glass containers. A 2018 study found that canned sardines and sprats contain microplastics. That's unfortunate because canned sardines are an amazing source of protein and omega-3s, but they do apparently contain microplastics, so you don't want to consume them on a regular basis. While we're talking about proteins, then one sneaky source of microplastics is plastic cutting boards. That's because cutting on the board with a knife flicks away the microplastics that go into your food. A 2023 study found that plastic cutting boards can make a person consume 7.4 to 50.7 grams of microplastics per year from polyethylene chopping boards and 49.5 grams from polypropylene chopping boards. So replace your plastic chopping boards with wooden or stainless steel chopping boards. Another source is Teflon non-stick frying pans. The coating is made of microplastics that when scratched releases into the food. In a 2022 study, they found that broken coating of non-stick cookware could release over 2 million micro and nanoplastics into the food, whereas a surface crack or a scratch does so by 9,000 particles. So instead of using Teflon pans, the healthier option would be ceramic pans or stainless steel pans. I wouldn't recommend using cast iron skillets because they can actually leach iron into your food, which isn't a good thing either. High iron levels can be problematic for heart disease and liver disease. Moving on with vegetables and fruits, which unfortunately also contain some microplastics. A 2020 study found that fruits and vegetables contain microplastics with the fruits being higher than vegetables. The most common source of ingesting microplastics from fruit was via apples and the lowest source were carrots. The reason why fruit and vegetables contain microplastics might have to do with the packaging again, but it also appears that the fruit and vegetables can absorb microplastics through the soil. A study from the US found microplastics up to 90 centimeters or 35 inches below the surface. The microplastics end up in the soil because of using sewage sludge for watering the plants. Sewage sludge is created from cleaning municipal wastewater, so all the water that goes down your drain and toilet contains a lot of microplastics. The best way to avoid microplastics in your fruit and vegetables is to find a local farm so you can buy the produce straight from the farmer because they're less likely to use the sewage water and they're more likely to use regular tap water or some rainwater. 
This is obviously not feasible for a lot of people, but you could also clean your vegetables properly. For example, if you buy berries or fruits that you eat with the skin, soak them in the water with baking soda for about 10 minutes. This not only helps to clean them thoroughly, but also helps to remove pesticides and other chemicals and bacteria that may be on your food. Then rinse them with clean water to get the salt off and you can eat them. Rice also contains microplastics, although the amounts are quite small. A 2021 study found that a single serving of rice might contain 3 to 4 milligrams of plastics. And Australians may consume around one gram of microplastics from rice per year. Pre-cooked and instant rice contain four times more microplastics than uncooked rice. And washing the rice before cooking could reduce the plastic amount by 20 to 40 percent. So the regular rice that comes in a bag is less likely to contain microplastics and the amounts are much smaller. But regardless, doesn't matter which type of rice you're consuming, you want to wash the rice before because that's also going to reduce the amount of microplastics. Before I continue on, I'll briefly mention to you about one of my favorite longevity gadgets, which is the Bond Charge Infrared Sauna Blanket. It's a cheaper and more convenient way to take the sauna anywhere at any time. I've talked a lot about the benefits of regular sauna use. I believe taking a sauna regularly is the second best thing for your longevity after exercise. In fact, the sauna mimics a lot of the health benefits of exercise. The sauna is also effective for excreting heavy metals and other chemicals we're exposed to on a daily basis. The Bond Charge Infrared Blanket is made of pure leather and it's low in EMF. It's got a rating of 4.9 out of 5 based on 176 reviews, which is crazy. But I'm not surprised because I'm using the blanket almost every day and it gets the same job done as a regular sauna. Plus, it's easy to clean and you can store it under your bed. Alright, back to the video. I'm pretty sure everyone knows about plastic bottles that they contain a lot of microplastics, especially if they're exposed to heat. So do any other plastic containers like Tupperware, plastic boxes for food, plastic kettles, etc. So you want to choose glass bottles and glass containers for storing your water and food. Salt also contains microplastics. It's been found that commercially available salts across the world, including European sea salts, contain microplastics. However, it looks like industrial harvesting methods is the biggest reason there's microplastics in the salt. And traditionally harvested methods contain much fewer amounts. A lot of salt brands have started to list on their packaging that it's low microplastic salt, which I think is a good thing. The amount of microplastics obtained from salt is quite low though. The researchers estimate that only 14 micrograms are ingested per person per year, which is a very small amount. Sugar also contains microplastics. If we needed another reason to not consume table sugar, then that's it. If you're using honey, maple syrup, ketchup or mayonnaise or any other sauce that's in a plastic bottle, then you can expect it to contain some microplastics. Tea bags made of plastic nylon can release billions of microplastics into your water because it's also hot. The tea bags made of plastic are usually more expensive and shinier. They feel kind of slick, but that's not a good thing. Instead, you want to use loose leaf tea or tea bags made out of silk or cotton or paper. When you're making coffee, then the best way to do it is with either a French press or with a paper filter. The coffee pods are made of plastic and the heat releases microplastics into your drink. As you can see, there's no escaping microplastics. Unless you live in the forest, you hunt all your food and you only eat wild berries and wild fruits, then you're not escaping the microplastics. And you probably don't need to avoid them entirely. There are ways to excrete microplastics and there are certain cooking methods that also reduce the amount of microplastics in the food, so you don't need to be super scared of about this. But I think that one thing that you should do is just make more educated decisions about some of the simple things. So rather than storing your food in Tupperware that's made of plastics, just store your food in these glass boxes and glass jars. It's just much healthier and it doesn't require that much effort. And if you're at an airport, they sell only plastic water bottles, then you know, you could just drink it and not worry about it because you know that at other times you're making the educated decision and not drinking from a plastic bottle. So here is a list or a ranking of the items that you want to replace in terms of importance. Number one, plastic water bottles. Number two, plastic cutting boards and Teflon nonstick pans. Number three, plastic containers and Tupperware. Number four, plastic tea bags and coffee pots. Number five, tin and aluminum cans like sardines, beans, etc. Number six, plastic condiments like ketchup and mayonnaise or honey and maple syrup. Number seven, processed proteins wrapped in plastics like fish sticks, nuggets, etc. Number eight, whole food proteins wrapped in plastics like fish and meat. Number nine, fruits and vegetables, especially if they're wrapped in plastic. And number 10, salt and sugar. All right, that's it for this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.